So far, we have introduced various imaging results, here we will report the results obtained as a supplement to this imaging. As already mentioned, in Papilio Macaon and Papilio Zuthus, weight changes in diapause and non-diapausing pupae have been reported by Suzuki. According to it, non-diapause pupae lose weight continuously from the time of pupation toward emergence. In diapause pupae, some weight loss is observed immediately after pupation, but after that, there is almost no change. And it has been shown that the body weight decreases sharply again just before emergence. Similar results were introduced in the 1984 paper by Tanaka and Tsubaki regarding the weight change of Papilio pupae. Comparing the results of our study with these, first, the weight loss rate of the diapause pupae of Papilio biener pupae is smaller than that of the non-diapause pupae, and the decrease rate of the diapause pupae during the low temperature storage period is the decrease of normal temperature storage. These results consistent with Papilio Macaon and Papilio Zuthus results of Suzuki. The results of the Loetophia japonica and the Parnassus glacialis, which we weighed for the first time, was very similar to the course of the Loetophia japonica for diapause pupae of Papilio biener, and the course of the Parnassus glacialis for non diapause pupae of Papilio biener. Furthermore, in Loetophia japonica, for which changes in the inside of the pupa have been reported, we compared previous reports with our imaging results, changes in pupa weight, and changes in temperature. First, we will compare changes in body weight with proton magnetic resonance imaging. According to this, it was found that the internal state changed before and after the step. Next, the positions of the steps correspond to the developmental stages shown in 1988 paper of Ishii, and furthermore, the positions of these steps correspond to changes in temperature. We were able to show that the pupae of Loetophia japonica sense temperature fluctuations and adjust their development. Also, Kaneko and Katagili showed that, in Pyrrhus brassici, diapause pupae have a higher density than non-diapause pupae, and the gap inside the pupae immediately after pupation is smaller in diapause pupae. In addition, they reported that in Papilio zuthus, the cavities inside the non-diapause pupae gradually increased up to the tenth day of pupation, whereas in the diapause pupae, there was almost no change during the same period. In our observations this time, the development of pupal cavities also differed between non-diapause pupae and diapause pupae in the Papilio biener, which was consistent with the results of non-diapause pupae and diapause pupae of Papilio zuthus. In addition, Diapus pupae of Papilio biener does not appear to undergo any major changes in the body during refrigeration, but the thoracic cavity gradually increases in size even during refrigeration, I think there is a factor in the weight loss of the pupa. The reason for this is thought to be that the stored material inside the pupa decreases at a certain rate due to respiration, especially when there is no particular change inside the pupa. On the other hand, in Loetophia japon nica, the changes inside the pupa occur several times, and in addition to normal respiration. We think it is thought that the weight loss associated with the changes inside the pupa occurs at that time. Moreover, imaging ways of this time caused more serious and essential problems. It is a matter of the T1 weight image and the T2 weighted image. As already explained, the T1 weighted image records the signal of a polymer such as lipid or protein whereas the T2-weighted image image records a signal in response to a small molecule such as water, so the images should be as significantly different from each other. In fact, in the image of the human body, these two pictures are almost inverted images of each other. However, this time, the two images we were able to obtain are almost the same, although there are some differences. This may indicate that the standard settings for imaging the human body cannot be used for arthropods, especially insects with structures different from the human body, especially exoskeletons. It is thought that this indicates that various trials and errors are required for various settings at the time of imaging. From here, looking for Japanese butterflies that live the same life as the butterflies examined this time, first of all, except for 13 Papilioninae species, the butterflies that overwinter in pupa. Total of 14 species are known, beside Loetophia japonica, these are Loetophia puzzoloi, two Anthocharis species, Colophrys feria, Celestrina sujitanii, two Leptidea species, 
Rapala arida, two Neopi species, Cosps benjaminii, and two Pyrgus species. The difference is that the former six species, including Loetorphia japonica, are one brood per year, while the latter eight species, like the Papilioninus species, incorporate diapause into part of their polymorphic life cycle. Next, like Parnassus glacialis, Japanese butterflies that overwinter in the shell of eggs as first in star larvae and emerge from early spring to early summer are all Thecliny species. All Fexenia species, two Brenthus species, and three Argonus species, and Spirea aglaja. Furthermore, in Japan, Parnassus eversmani, which is distributed only in the alpine regions of Hokkaido, takes a full two years to become an adult from an egg, in the winter of the first year. It spends larva in the egg, and in the winter of the second year, it spends larva in the pupae. There seems to be no report on the pupal dynamics of these butterflies so far, and researches on these butterflies are expected. Finally, we would like to introduce the relationship between the distribution and evolution of the three subfamilies of Papillionidae investigated this time. The seven figures below show the distribution of Papillionidae species on the continents of the world today. The family as a whole is distributed on all continents except Antarctica, but when lowered to the subfamily level, the Papillionidae species are distributed on all these continents. In contrast, we can see that Baroniini is found only in central Mexico, Parnassiini is found only in the cold regions of northern Eurasia and North America, and Xeranthiini is found only in the Alps Himalayas and eastern regions. Applying this distribution to past continental arrangements, these four subfamilies were settled at the latest about 120,000 years ago. With continental divisions of once existed Pangaea continent and associated climate change, it is probable that they adapted and completed each life cycle. In addition, since the four main host plant of Papillionidae species, Magnoliaceae, Lauraceae, Aristolochiaceae, and Rutaceae, are also distributed on all continents except Antarctica. These plants also spread to each continent during this period. Of particular note is Xeranthiini, who later occur on the southern coast of Eurasia. Between about 100 million and 50 million years ago, the continents of Africa and India had not yet collided with the continent of Eurasia. Furthermore, since the North American and South American continents were also separated, it is believed that there was a very warm current around the equator, the equatorial current in the Tethys Ocean between them. Therefore, it is considered that the southern coast of Eurasia, which is adjacent to these currents, was also a very hot region. The Xeranthiini species have acquired the ability to pupate through the heat to protect themselves from this high temperature, and as a result, today, when the Earth is colder than it was then. This ability remains as the anniversary of the Loetorphia species, and these butterflies it is thought that it is useful for our survival. In addition, some Xeranthiini species submerge into the ground and become pupae, and they survive well in the current desert environment. Baronia brevicornis, the only species of Baroniaini, has a similar life cycle, which is understandable given that the southern coast of North America at that time was also under the influence of the North Equatorial Current. On the other hand, among the Xeranthiini species, a group of butterflies that lived in the alpine area due to the collision of the Indian continent seemed to have completed their own life cycle due to the inconvenience of long-term diapause in the pupa. It is believed that it has become the current Bhutanitis species. As mentioned above, for the most part, the anniversary of each subfamily of Papillionidae species coincides with the division of the continent, but in detail. The Xeranthiini species Saracinus montella sends multiple generations a year. On the other hand, among the Papillionidae species, some of the genus Pazela species, most of the subsenus Pterurus killaza species, and of the genus Papilio species, the populations distributed in high latitudes and high altitudes, like the Luodorphia species, emerges once a year. Tenopalpus species are also known to have their own life cycle, how these species came to have such life cycle, and Xeranthia group species, Loodorphia species, Pazia species, and Kilaza species. Whether such similarities with the above are due to pure coincidence, etc. remained as a topic for future research. We hope that in the future, we will be able to answer this question by announcing the results of similar examinations of these butterflies.
and you are given many helps from many persons or companies to do our research and to make this presentation. These are the name of them. Thank you very much for your attention. Let's see you at the next chance. Goodbye.